Uh, I feel for my country today. The United, the United States of America, how we interact around the world, how we treat our fellow fellow citizens of this planet. Down in Venezuela, a failed coup attempt. A failed coup attempt. Americans say, I didn't do, we didn't do nothing. Why? We're just trying to help. We're trying to help the people. The poor, starving people of Venezuela are crying out for our help. Please, America, help us. We're starving. Socialism. Oh, my God. They're starving. They got a humanitarian crisis in Venezuela. That's what the Americans are telling us, right? That's what the, right? I'm an American, but I got to look at that... Uh, Fake news and and uh, lying, cheating, stealing Pompeo and Trump, right? To tell me what's going on in the world. So, let's dive right in. Let's look at um, so Venezuela. Just an uh, overview. Venezuela yesterday, a c- crew of Juan Guaido, Juan Guaido, the opposition leader, Juan Guaido, tr- put together a bunch of military guys that uh, uh, defected military uh, operatives or whatever military soldiers. And they tried a failed coup. They tried a coup, right? They tried to show some muscle and put together a million people strong and storm storm the castle of Nicolas Maduro, the president of the country, right? And it failed. Uh, they ended up with the they ended up with the same ten soldiers, and uh, and once uh, Maduro's troops fired some tear gas, they all they all took off. Right? And now they're all hiding in embassies. Juan Guaido, they're hiding in. They took refuge in all the, uh, in all the uh, uh, embassies that are inside Caracas. They're like the cowards, right? So, let's look at let's look at the spin, uh, spin machine, the American spin machine. Let's see what uh, Pompeo says on Fox News. Now they don't do journal- Fox doesn't do journalism anymore. They just they just let Pompeo talk. So let's hear what Pompeo said. Get the latest on the situation right now from Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. He joins us from the State Department. Mr. Secretary, thanks for being here. Brad, it's great to be with you this evening. Heard in an interview earlier you said that uh, Nicolas Maduro was on his way out or planning to leave by plane to Havana, Cuba. How close did he get? Yeah, it's understanding that uh, he, w- he was ready to go. He'd, he'd made a decision that uh, we've been urging him to make for quite some time. Uh, and then he was, uh, he was diverted from that action by the Russians. 100% lie. That's a 100% lie, and you'll hear Maduro say it in his own words. He's saying that Pompeo's saying that Maduro had a plane on the tarmac. He was ready to get in the plane. He was going to fly to Cuba, and and the Russians, again, they're still running the Russian shit, right? Fake Russia. Russia's behind everything the evil, and that he was going to escape, and that the Russians talked him out of it. Total lie. 100%. Uh, we, we hope we hope he'll reconsider and get back on that plane. Uh, we've we've made it very clear. We support the National Assembly, their uh, interim president Juan Guaido, and we're supporting the Venezuelan people in their uh, hour where it's time to get it right and begin to build back their economy so that uh, starving children can eat and those that are sick can actually get medicine. That's starving children and and sick people in need of medicine. That's how they're painting the picture. But the, 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 the boots on the ground don't show don't tell that story at all. It tells a story of a you know, lower kind of income people, happy people, proud, fat, they eat well, they you know, transportation is fine. Again, it's not the, the, the best situation. It's still unexplainable why they have these immense oil reserves and they still live in kind of a you know, lower income bracket. But so what? So what? Is wealth is is that the only measure of wealth? Is how many how many iPhones you have and how many how many uh, you know a new car in the garage? And, uh, it's sitting on the nation's very border. Would he have safe passage to Havana if he got on that plane? Uh, Brett, we've we've made very clear uh, what uh, uh, are the expectations uh, for uh, Maduro's departure for the departure of others too. Uh, and what our expectations, what assurances we're willing to provide them, I, I'm not going to discuss those here. But living is one of them. <laughs> uh, Brett, I'm just not going to start down that path. Okay. Well, what about the Russians? Has there been communication with the Russians since they told him to stay in Caracas? Uh, Brett, I don't want to get into all of the conversations we had today, but it's very clear. Uh, the Cubans and the Russians understand that they are upsetting uh, the duly elected leader there in Venezuela. They, they know that. I, I hear sometimes people saying, well, the United States is considering an invasion. The invasion has taken place. The Cubans have thousands of their officers inside of Venezuela today. They are not there 
with the consent of the government. They were there with the consent of uh, the thug Nicolas Maduro, uh, but not Juan Guaido, the duly elected leader of the Venezuelan government today. He keeps saying the duly elected leader, Juan Guaido, is not the duly elected leader. The leader of the country is Nicolas Maduro. He's, again, lying. It's just you throw this out to the ignorant masses and you hope it sticks. Right? You keep saying the same lie over and over. He's a CIA fucking troll. This is Trump's, Trump's guy. Day. Uh, and for the Russians, it's the same. Uh, look, it's time for Maduro to leave. It's time for there to be free and fair elections. And it's time to begin to rebuild this once great economy. You know, you're talking about Cuba and Russia, you have, as you look at the map here, 45 nations around the world have recognized Guaido as the leader of Venezuela, including the U.S., but there are 14 countries that continue to support Maduro. Russia, China, Turkey, Cuba, Bolivia, Iran, Nicaragua, Uruguay, Mexico, Syria, Belarus, South Africa, C Cambodia, and North Korea. I mean, are you turning the screws on these countries? How is that pressure building to accept Guaido? So the State Department Department team's been hard at this. We're now up over 50 nations. I think it's 54 or 56 nations that are supporting Juan Guaido. Uh, we're happy to have the 57th, uh, the moment we can get it. Um, we've made clear to the nations that you just called out, uh, we've made clear to them they're on the wrong side of history, uh, and that the rule of law and democracy ought to be restored, uh, that the destruction that's taken place over years inside of Venezuela will be a struggle to rebuild, but it is a worthy cause, and Nicolas Maduro cannot be anywhere in the country if the Venezuelan people hope to finally achieve that outcome. I'm confident they'll get there, and the United States, uh, the Lima Group, the countries in the uh, region, the Organization of American States are all supporting that. You mentioned that uh, some in the Maduro regime talk about the U.S. possibly invading Venezuela. One of those was the ambassador to the U.N. for Venezuela, who said that the buildup in the embassy in Bogota, Colombia, next door, has been to get ready for war. Let's listen to this. It's 3,000 planners, 3,000 intelligence officers, 3,000 trainers, 3,000 technicians, 3,000 information warfare technicians. It's a war embassy. Show me wherever in the world there are more than 3,000 Americans in one embassy. So they are planning for war. Let's take off the uh, blindfold and look the reality as it actually is. What's your response to that as we look at live pictures uh, in Caracas, Mr. Secretary? Right, I, we never talk about the numbers we have at any particular embassy. They, they change from day to day. Uh, but if the question is, is the United States prepared uh, to consider military action if that's what it takes to restore the democracy there in Venezuela, the president's been consistent and unambiguous about that, that the, the option to use military force is available if that's what is ultimately called for. We hope it's not. We hope there can be a peaceful resolution and that Maduro will leave without violence. We're watching those who are engaged in violence and we will hold them accountable. Uh, but the president's made very, very clear that we are going to ensure that Venezuelan democracy is restored. So so that's about it, right? So you, you hear it's it's either you leave or uh, or we'll use violence to get rid of you, right? So, so here's Maduro's response. I can identify a toda esa gente que disparó, irlos a buscar y someterlos a la justicia, entregarlos a la fiscalía y a los tribunales, a todos, están los videos de todo tipo, sabemos quiénes son, ya hay que buscarlos, no puede haber impunidad, tiene que haber justicia para que haya paz en Venezuela. Ahí mismo corrió la noticia de que estaba tomada la base militar de la Carlota. No... So first, first of all, he's telling that there will be consequences to the usurpers that are uh, traitors that are tra that are siding with the unelected CIA hack Juan Guardo, the the CIA implant, right? And uh, anybody who was firing guns, Maduro is is basically testifying that they will be held accountable. Let's see what happens. Nunca jamás estuvo tomada la base militar de la Carlota, como todas las bases militares estuvieron en alerta total. Leales absolutamente a la revolución y al comandante en jefe y a nuestra constitución. Decía May Pompeo en la tarde que yo, decía Maduro, tenía un, un avión prendido para irse para Cuba, para huir. Y los rusos lo bajaron del avión y le prohibieron que saliera del país. Señor Pompeo, por favor. Falta de seriedad. Ah, 
Total lie. So, so there's no, but Ma, Ma, Maduro is not, he wasn't on no tarmac. He wasn't on no plane ready to escape. Pompeo made up the whole lie, right? Because, because that's what Pompeo does, right? Pompeo. I, I, I was the CIA director. We lied, we cheated, we steal, stole. I, I was the CIA director. We lied, we cheated, we steal, stole. It's, <laughs> it was like, we, we, had, we had entire, we had entire training courses. Right? That's who my, Mike Pompeo is, a liar, cheater, and stealer. But who's really behind the whole thing? Let's listen to the good, let's listen to the good Donald, right? Donald Trump, right? He's a businessman, right? We'd rather have, we'd, what would you rather have in the White House, a businessman or, a, you know, what would you rather have? You like a businessman? So let's, have, let's, look at, let's listen to the businessman explain exactly what's going on. The fact is, what we should have done is we should have asked the rebels when they came to it. We should have said, we'll help you, but we want 50% of your oil. They would have absolutely said, okay, 100%. In fact, they would have said, how about 75%? So, they came to us, they were nothing. They were gone. The war was over. He was taking over. Then all of a sudden, we go in through NATO, which is funded by us largely, and which is largely our weapons and our guys. We go in and absolutely decimate this guy. They take over, and now you ask for oil? And isn't it sad? We could have had anything we wanted. We could have had 50% of those oil fields. You know, in the old days when you had a war, it's to the victor belong the spoils. So we could have had something special. When the so-called rebels came to us, we should have said, fellas, we're going to help you. We want 50% of your oil. They would have said, thank you very much. We have a deal. Write it down. Sign it. We have a deal. We would have been a rich nation again. They have tremendous oil reserves in Libya. Okay, so we're bombing and bombing and bombing. The rebels didn't win this war. We won the war, meaning NATO, which is mostly the United States. We just keep bombing. Every time there's a problem, we bomb the hell out of them, and then the rebels get the credit. Why aren't we getting repaid? Why aren't we taking oil? Why aren't we doing what we should be doing from a common sense standpoint? So, we've got to get smart. We've got to run this country right. We're not going to have a lot of other chances. And while we're at it, we've got to get at least paid back. Now, I'd go further than that. I'd say we should get 50% of their oil, period. If four months ago, when they were being routed and just beaten badly and ready to give up, if we would have said we want 50% of the oil, they would have said, absolutely, you have a deal. Help us, help us, please, you have a deal. So that's, your, that's the President of the United States speaking. You remember him? Donald Trump? Uh, what, is his, what is his business plan? What is his business plan? What is the Donald's business plan, right? It's all about the money, right? It's all about, it's about oil. But I thought Pompeo was about starving children. And all right, so it, it, isn't it clear? How much clearer can it be that it's a coup down in Venezuela? What if, but what if, but what if they wanted, if the United States really wanted to help people, what about France? What about uh, Yellow Vest? Today they're, they're live. Well, let's look at that. Let's look at the live Yellow Vest, right? Here we go. So Yellow vests are live in France. Oh, look, the cops. Where's the Americans? Where's the, where, where's the, where's the outcry that the people, the, the helpless people of France, trying to, trying to, this is happening right now. This is live in France, right? And has been going on for 26 weeks. We're in week 25 or 26, the yellow vests. Right now, in the middle of Paris, this is happening. Where's, where's Pompeo's? This is the people speaking up. Where's the support? Where's the support? Where's the support of Mike Pompeo? Where is Pompeo? Where is Trump? Right? Venezuela, Venezuela. Because the, the Venezuela's got oil, they want to take that oil and they want to they want to they want to turn that shit into a into a cash cow, right? It's not about humanitarian effort. It's not about the voice of the people. You see, I mean, evidence is here. It's like right in the middle of Europe. This is happening. 
and the United States is thoroughly silent on the on the fact, completely, utterly, and and insanely silent. While France is while the French people are screaming for help, at the top of it, millions of people, literally, real real count, the millions of people, not not in all in one day, but some total of 20, I don't know, 30 million people in the country. There's millions of people that that are working class people that are putting on yellow vests and screaming for help because of the oligarchy squeezing them because of monopoly. Right? It's the opposite of what it's it's the opposite of what one guardo. They're trying to stuff imperialism, American imperialism, down Nicolas Maduro's throat. And in France, it's the opposite. The people are trying to kick the oligarchy out. Their leader. Uh, they're trying to get rid of that guy, fucking whatever his name is, Macron. Right? Trying to get rid of him. Right? But the United States is silent on that. Why? Because all the corporations are well well positioned to profit from the French people's agony. In Venezuela, they're free people. They have oil. Right? They have oil under their feet. They're trying to, you know, they're trying to. They're okay with being. The Venezuelan people are okay with not having a lot. See, they have oil, right? And they, they also have this resource fun fuels their country, right? You don't pay for gas uh, in, in Venezuela if you're a Venezuelan citizen. It's, it's pennies. It's, it's literally pennies. It's a natural resource that's given to all people, right? It's their way. It's their policy. It's what the Venezuelan people voted for and wanted and still want. Right, so they can they can, you know, have a that part of their economy taken care of. Now, again, there's there's massive economic issues in the country, and that's for the Venezuelan people to figure out. But, but the as the, as an American, right, we we we're watching our our leadership clearly engage in a in a, in a economic in economic warfare through sanctions, right. Steve Mnuchin, the Secretary of the Treasury, has has squeezed Maduro uh, and Pedavesa the the way that Venezuela was making money selling their oil in the United States. They, all those accounts have been frozen. Right? That's your Secretary of the Treasury, Steve Mnuchin, Mr. Goldman Sachs, and Mr. Trump. Right, the, the swamp. Right, Bolton and 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 Mnuchin and Pompeo and Elliot Abrams, the war criminal. I, you know, Mr. Mr. Uh, Pence, yes, Mr. Trump, you know, yes, Mr. Trump guy. Right? It's, a, it's a bad problem, right? And it's, it's um, someone made the comment, I think, in, in, in our thread, right, said that the United States is at the end, is, is where the Soviet Union, the, the Russian people were during the Cold War, when we were winning, when, when we toppled uh you know, communism and communism fell in the 19, early 1990s. We were rising, and now it's the opposite. The the Russian Chinese, right? The 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 paradigm is shifting to China, Russia, Africa, right? And we're floundering, right? So so this is kind of a last ditch effort. The, the markets are bubbling up. They're so high they can't go any higher. And it's just you know it's a, po- a profit driven economy you know so so that's what's going on. I think that um, I'll also say that uh, watching our uh, presidential um, race for whatever it's worth, right? You got twenty five Democrats jockeying for position, trying to stop Sanders. You know the idea of a, of a society of the people, by the people, and for the people. There's one more chance, and and. Um, if if Sanders is stopped, if the message of Bernie Sanders of a, you know, universal health care and uh, and uh, college to, free college tuition at city and state universities, getting money out of politics, reducing the war budget, right? All those things that we talk about all the time. At least I talk about all the time. This is the last chance for 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 America to get it. If Sanders fails, if if the Democrats stop him. If they cheat him, they're already cheating. You already see CNN. They're, they're cheating him, right? So if they cheat him, when they cheat him and Sanders is eliminated and uh, and uh, the Democrats pick a shit sandwich like Joe Biden who goes on to lose to Trump, well, then Bernie Sanders is all that effort, all that talk, all that good talk, all that good feeling will, will have been in vain, right? So 
if Sanders doesn't grow some balls, if people, if 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 the paradigm doesn't shift in his direction, if mainstream media and the money and uh, people don't um, go in that direction, then we'll we're just we're just circling the drain, ready to fall. Because again, Trump has no idea how to how to fix an economy. His, his, they're toppling literally toppling countries and and choking us while they're doing it. Marcus Conti reporting.